Hey guys, we're back with our duel video. Uh, this is the first duel video with me commentating over this, so I hope you guys enjoy this. And we have Firefist versus Gishki Frogs. Bit of an interesting matchup here. Uh, we have Brandon, who's a new cover, on the left, and we got uh, Larson on the right, using his Gishki Frogs. And let's get right into it. It looks like Lar and it looks like uh, Br Brandon here as Normal Summon a Red Resonator and specials out a Rooster. And looking like he's going to go into a synchro play, and he does. He brings out High Speed Roy Chambara with two set in the back row, and he looks like he ends his turn from that. So, not really anything too special. Firefist haven't really aged well, I believe, in Master Rule 4. At least that's not what I think, anyway. And Larson does start his turn by summoning a Swap Frog, and he's going to get that also uh, crucial dump to the graveyard he's probably going to send out the ronin totem as he continues looking through his deck so yeah gishki frogs one of larson's uh favorite decks <laughs> that he has created um these last few duel videos he's been in two i think he's done two of these like the last two duel videos he had him he was using this deck so this is going to be very interesting he does send the ronin totem and we'll see if he has a water monster in hand. I believe he does. I believe he has something in hand. And he, so he does do the Swap Frog effect to bounce back to hand. And, and he does have the Dew Frog to special it out and gets another uh, extra deck, uh, deck dump to send another Road to Tone, it looks like. He's probably going to do that. Probably the wise thing to do. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see what part of the deck that is going to pretty much carry Larson here is going to be the Gishkis or the Frogs. Right now it looks like the Frogs. It just looks like a <laughs> pure Frog deck right now, to be honest. And looking like he's going to cut the, have his opponent cut the deck here. So I'm probably going to just going to end on a totally awesome here as he special summons this Ronin Totem. Nothing really too special, to be honest. And he does go into the totally awesome it looks like. Gets that down. And, oh, Brandon has the Solemn Strike to uh, negate that whole summon. But good thing for Larson here. He's going to be able to grab back a Water Monster to at least get something back off of that. Not the great, not the greatest start, though. You do not want to lose a Toad like that right out of the gate as he starts to set some cards. Probably some Paleos. I saw a Daw Miscus there. Let's see here if that's going to be the end of this turn. It looks like he ends this turn. And, wow. Brandon has the Twin Twisters, and this is going to destroy two Paleo, the Dionomiscus and an Olanoides. So, not a great end to that turn for Larson there. As Brandon now sets a card and s starts to attack directly, and looks and wow, Larson does have another Dionomiscus there, and he will banish the Chambara by discarding an Aquamere and brings out one of the Paleos. So, went from bad to good for Larson there, as he has an open field. To work with to get some damage off as he normal summons the swap frog to get in our dump from the deck so yeah all Ison looks like he's gonna be in full control for this as he just probably is gonna go probably go probably just go off right now i think depends on what that set card is on the and brand side of the field yeah and also brand has no hand so he's gonna be in top deck mode as well so not the greatest position for Brandon as another Rotonin does come down by banishing a second Dupe Frog. We'll see what Larson does go do here. He could go a variety of ways. He could probably go into a Mistar Boy or just play it safe and go into another Toad. And it looks like, oh, he does go into a Mistar Boy. We'll see that. And if he does have the correct, we'll see if he has the correct amount to go into anything. And looks like he's just going to bring out one Ronin Toten, and he will get that second Toad down. Boosted by the Mastar Boy to make that thing a 2700 beat stick. With uh, Mastar Boy also being a 1900 beat stick as well. So Larson is in the driver's seat right now. He does do some direct damage, and Brandon's already down the 1900 light points left. As we enter... His turn again, and we'll see what Lar we'll see what Bran does as Larson does activate Totally Austin's effect to bring out that Dupe Frog, so Bran can only attack that one Dupe Frog, which pretty much just like makes Larson more in control of this duel. 
And yep, let's see, shuffle his deck. We'll see what Brandon does. It, there's not much, I don't know sure if he has any top decks he could do. Maybe Tenki would help. Maybe get somewhere, but oh, he just sets one and passes. And this is, this is exactly what Larson would want as he does use the second effect Second, a second effect of Toad again to at least get up more frogs. He's going to be going off some more as he does get another dump of, from the main deck from the Swap Frog. All Larson really has to do really here is just attack for game, and he pretty much got it. But we'll see if Larson wants to flex a bit and get some more stuff out as he starts uh, hand shuffling a bit. <laughs> that weird hand shuffle he has. He has a Gishi Abyss and a Zilgigas in hand, so maybe he can get out a Zilgigas if he really wants to, but all he has to do is attack. And looking like he's going to do a Link 2 here? Don't know what you'd want off of that. Maybe a Proxy Dragon, I guess, if you wanted to really protect Toad there. And oh, nope, he's going to go into a Link 4. Uh, probably Borload, <laughs> and he does Borload. He does bring out the Borload Dragon, the 3000 Link 4 that can pretty much steal monsters. And he does have a bunch of frogs in that graveyard. We're going to be seeing a lot of Rowan Tones coming down. And he goes into a Laren Link. Yeah, well, he does go into a Proxy Dragon. So he's just he's just flexing at this point, probably. He's probably just, like, just getting overkill, probably. He'll add back Swap Frog of a Toad's effect, it looks like. Which doesn't really matter, because I'm pretty sure he has enough frogs in the graveyard anyway for both his Rowan Tones to come out. Unless he has... Does not, doesn't look like he has it, maybe. And he specs the Swap Frog. Or is it normal? Probably a normal. I may have missed his spec there, but regardless, he goes into another Toad and tax for game, maybe? And oh, Mirror Force, but that's not really relevant because he's just going to negate that with Toad. So, and brings out another Dynamiscus, but still just overkill right there. And Larson does take game run in very, very impressive fashion. Nothing really from Brandon there. Nothing really... He didn't get, have anything really going there as we head into game two. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how Brandon responds. If he's going to go off. I don't know how Fire Fist will go off against this. I mean, there, I again, I don't have very much experience with the deck. So it'll be interesting to see what he does for the most part. I do see a set scapegoat, which is actually pretty good as he normal summons the bear and passes turn so he has a set scapegoat so he could go into some link shenanigans if he does uh, depending on when he activates that and wow so we're, Larson does start his turn and now we get to see the Gishki engine take its uh, take its effect into this duel as he there was no really any Gishki stuff happening last duel but now Larson finally does start doing some Gishki plays as he discards the vision which will allow him to grab that aqua mirror from his deck to his hand the good thing about the gishkis as well they can be treated uh, as a full requirement for the ritual summon so another very handy thing for larson there we'll see what he does here probably going to go into a zilgigas for the most part and he does play the aqua mirror using the, another vision in hand to bring out zilgigas now larson will has a cool effect with zilgigas by paying a thousand he can Look at the top card of his deck, and if it's a Gishki, he's shuffle a card in the deck, but shuffle a card on his on Brand's side of the field into the deck, but it does not, not does not seem it's going to matter as Brandon does use a Solemn Strike there to negate that effect. Larson though does get the Zilgigas back as he does ac activate the Aqua Mirror to bring the Zilgigas back to hand and to uh, get the Aqua Mirror back to deck. And wow, and he does get, has a salvage, brings back the shadow. And it's just going to be deja vu all over again as he discards the shadow to bring back an Aquamere from deck to head. So pretty much that Solemn Strike did virtually nothing to Larson here as it's just going to get the Zilgigas back onto the field and just pretty much be where he was a few seconds ago. And I don't think Fire Fist can beat over a 3200 beat stick it'll be interesting to see if he can uh yep aquamere coming down and here comes the seagull because again so just nothing just the same thing that happened just a few seconds ago now we'll see what Larson does he's probably going to use his first effect which he does by paying a thousand to see if he can get a gishki card looks like they're going to cut the deck here first since he did not cut 
be, which actually is wise because this is actually really important. See, he gets, he does get a Dynamiscus, so no Gishki, but it's still not that bad because the Paleozoics do do something for the deck as well by helping just with disruption. And looking like Larson's just going to attack into the bear by dealing some damage. Brandon is going to be now down to 4,900 life points. And just staring at a 3,200 beat stick in the face with a possible Dynamiscus set. So Larson again is in control. But Scapegoat, go Scapegoat does come down. So Brandon will now have four tokens to work with. And we'll see what he does with those four tokens. And he does use it by going into firefighting Darumadol. Bit of an interesting play. I've never really seen someone use that. You go into that with the scapegoats, but we'll see what happens. He could go into a synchro play if he really wanted to with the to rest of the tokens, if he does have a tuner in hand. So we'll see what he does here. I don't think Rooster's a tuner either, so if he does, we'll see what he does in hand. I don't I see another rooster in hand. I don't know what I see another bear in hand, but I don't know if he has a tuner to use the rest of the tokens. He could go into boar load if he has a boar load, though, if he really wanted to. But I don't think he does. If he, I think he would have gone into it by now. So he normal summons another rooster, not a tuner. So this is going to be interesting. At least I don't think it's a tuner. And yeah, he's looking through his extra deck. I don't think he can go into anything really worth it to get over this 3200 Zeogigas staring him in the face. Larson's pretty much in control again, with two set, uh, probably just two Paleos, and we'll see what Brandon does. Doesn't really have anything to get rid of that Zeo Gigas. We'll see what he does here. Doesn't look like he's going to do anything. And wow, he, he has to pass. He has to pass turn, and Lars, this is exactly what Larson would want. He uses another uh, Zeogigas effect to draw and look like a Pot of Desires. So again, no doubt Gishki, but still, it's Pot of Desires. It's something good for him right there. And he normal summons a Swat Frog to get out, probably a Rodent dump a Rodent Tonin from deck to grave. So now the, the Frog Engine starting to come back, come back into this duel to start wreaking havoc on Brandon here. This is a, Brandon's not in a position he would want, just looking like pretty disastrous now. Because not only is he staring at a 3200 uh, beat stick, he's probably going to be staring at a totally awesome too. So, as if, as if this situation couldn't have gotten worse already. So, Larson started to do some more plays. We'll see what he does here. He probably has a lot of options he can do here. He does get the pot of, use the pot of desires here. So, we'll see what he draws off of this. Hopefully, he doesn't like uh, hurt him too bad as the... Like, we'll see if he can, uh, actually get unscathed here by this pot of desires. So he puts his Spanish 10 pile over there. We'll see what he draws in. Oh my god! That is, like, the best thing he could have drawn. He drew, he, he draws the Swap Frog and the Rodent Toten. And just, yeah, Larson now is just gonna just keep going. He's just gonna keep going off he's in the driver's seat now he's just gonna probably just get go as fast as he can now he has all the plays he has like pretty much everything he could have wanted now due to that draw of that that is amazing so now there's a bunch of ways larsa can go he's probably he's guaranteed a toad now there's like he's just guaranteed it now as he linked to he's probably gonna bring out larma starboy here which he does Making that Zeogigas into a 3,700 beater, which is just amazing when you think about that. And now the Rowan Tonins are going to come down, both of them, since he has plenty in that graveyard of his. And he's probably going to go into a totally awesome here, which he looking like he is, using them both as overlay material. And yep, Toad come down, and now we have, he's Chris, yeah, he's, he's in the driver's seat. This is almost everything he could have wanted. And he does play a Dynamiscus here to weaken up that board a bit so he can get more damage. He's look, probably looking to clear this board here. But he discards the Moria Greed and he's going to probably decide on what he's going to banish here. It doesn't really ma matter, I don't think, uh, what he banishes, I guess. I mean, he's it's either the Link Monster or the Rooster. I think, he, I mean, it doesn't really matter what he banishes here because he just has 
like enough damage to get like a humongous some like blow to Brandon here. But I guess um I guess maybe the Link Monster would be a good way. And he does choose the Link Monster to banish off of that. And now we'll see what he does here. He's probably just gonna like attack into start attacking now and he does. He uses the Zeal Gigas here to attack the rooster, I think. He, yep, he's gonna attack the rooster. Big bloat there to um, Brandon there as he's just now going to attack the tokens to just clear this board here. So now Brandon's turn is probably going to start here, and he I don't know what he's going to do here. Uh, we'll see what he does. He sets a card, and he brings out Spirit. Spirit will allow him to bring back a Fire Fist from Grave, but knowing Lars, he's just probably going to negate this. And which he does, he does negate the card right there. He's not going to let Brandon have any advantage whatsoever or have anything uh pretty much uh make the situation better and yep he will take that uh spirit there set on his side of the field now larson just probably just has game here he does use nolan notice now to clear the back row which was a bottomless which wasn't really a big deal at all and look like he has game here and he does he has game so yeah, Larson, wow, convincing fashion, winning 2-0 there. He just oh, he had the firm control, I mean, pretty much the whole time. And that'll pretty much do it for this duel video, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys enjoyed my commentary. I hope you guys will enjoy these duel videos now with commentary. Um, let me know how I did commentating wise down in the comment section below. And but yeah, as always, uh, leave a like, comment, definitely subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.